Very good. Well, good morning, everybody. I'd like to thank the committee for asking me to visit with you all today. We're going to talk about evaluating body condition and reproductive performance. Uh, swine extension specialist out of North Carolina State University, 70% extension, 30% research, focuses on genetics and production management. And I've been there for about three years now. I have a, a small army of, of graduate students, four master's students, and two PhD students. So in the coming years, they get one or two getting it finished uh, each year. If you need students that know pigs, know how to analyze data, and know a little something about genetics, we we'll probably have some students for you. Here is a, a handful of the projects that we have going on. Uh, these are all funded partially or fully by either national or state checkoff. We have some pellet quality projects we've collaborated with Murphy Brown on, a couple of those. Evaporative cooling. Evaporative cooling or cool cell pads is very common in the broiler industry in the southeast. It's very common in uh, swine gestation lactation facilities. It's not common in swine finishing facilities. So we have a collaboration with Pork, pork Board and uh, Murphy Brown looking at, looking at the economics of putting cool cell pads in finishing units. Um, sow body condition, uh, pork board has helped sponsor the, the extension piece of that, which we'll be talking about today. Genetics of pig quality, we've been collaborating with Smithfield Premium Genetics, looking at different studies in that. Uh, Matt talked some earlier about seasonality. Out at our Tidewater Research Station in the eastern part of the state, we actually have the capability to have genetic research lines. We're the only uh, we have the only genetic selection research lines east of the Mississippi, and we have one here for selection for improved reproduction under heat stress. So that's just a few of the projects we have going on today. Uh, outline for today's talk, we're going to make the case for objective body condition tools. And then we're going to talk about some of the research that we've been doing. Uh, experiment number one, we're lo looking for ideal body condition in relation to reproduction. In experiment two, we'll take it a little step further, look at it, looking for ideal body condition and body condition change in relation to reproduction. And we have a few slides looking at the economic impact of implementing the Sal Caliper, some industry data showing what they've been able to do, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. So Sal feeding management concepts, uh, some of this overlaps with the, the last presentation as far as what Matt talked about. But we want to reduce gestation feed intake, if possible, down to the, the lowest level we can get it to. We've got a chance for, for feed cost savings and perhaps more importantly, setting them up for the subsequent lactation to increase lactation feed intake. Matt showed a lot of nice data in the last presentation about increasing lactation feed in, intake, improves litter weight gain, wean to estrus interval, Subsequent failing rate, subsequent litter size, and if those sounds happen to not rebreed, increases cull weights. So here's an example of how we'd want to repartition gestation feed uh, to lactation. Across the x-axis, we have total feed intake in both these scenarios, feed budget A, feed budget B is in the red. Both these scenarios, are, our y-axis is feed intake per sound per year in pounds. We're feeding, we're allocating 2,400 pounds of feed for a sow. In feed budget A, we see we have higher gestation feed intake, lower lactation feed intake. Feed, in the feed budget B, we have reduced gestation feed intake, so we're taking those sows into farrowing thinner, uh, allocating more feed during the lactation phase, and we're going to see superior reproductive performance or throughput we expect in feed budget B. So basically, we may not be reducing gestation feed intake or overall feed intake that much, but we're taking feed out of gestation, and we're going to give, try to give that to them during lactation to increase our reproductive throughput. Feeding based on visual body condition. Is anybody in here managing herds that is not using visual body condition? What, what are you guys using? Hands, so visual body condition. So is anybody not using, what are you guys using? The ultrasound and the weigh tapes. 
Okay. So essentially, most people are visual body condition scoring right now. So pros, it's relatively inexpensive. You don't have to buy a tool. But there are several cons. It requires continuous training, farm-to-farm uh, -farm variation, as we'll see in the up upcoming slides here. You can get large farm-to-farm -farm variation within the same system. And potential for reduced profitability. If you guys, if ever, you have all your farms standardized, but you're feeding too much, you're going to have high feed costs and some other negative impacts we'll see here in the next coming slides. So the problem with visual body condition is if you cannot objectively measure it, how are you going to manage it? How do you know where you're at? How do you know if you're improving or not improving? How do you know where you are relative to five years ago? If you're not manage, measuring it, you can't manage it very well. So here is two farms in the southeast. Uh, farm A is in the farm one is in the green. Farm two is in the red. The upper graph here is farm body condition score along the x-axis. I broke it down into two threes and fours, and we see these farms. The distributions here are relatively similar. They think they're doing a relatively similar job. So these farms are within the same production system, same genetics, same facilities, same diets. The only difference is the people uh, adjusting the feed drop boxes. So down in the lower graph here, along the x-axis, we have sow caliper score. The y-axis is the percentage of sows in that, in that each category. Again, we have farm one in, in the green, farm two in the red. And we look, we see the... Farm one, the green farm, is doing a pretty good job. They have the majority of their sows in the optimal range. And you can see the distribution here. It's not a bell curve distribution. You can see they don't have very many over-conditioned sows. They have a few under-conditioned sows, but this was just after weaning, so they're either probably, yes? Is there a productivity difference between these farms? A what, sir? There is, but it's an observation of one. And so, yes, farm one did have a better litter size, lower pre-weaning mortality, but that's an observation of one, so I become hesitant to make that comparison. And we can see farm two is quite over-conditioned there in the red. Uh, some different, other different, some further measures of body condition differences between these two farms. Uh, these differences are all statistically significant if we, if we don't treat farm as the observational unit. Uh, farm two is about 60 pounds heavier. They have a quarter inch more back fat. And you can see again, the farm BCS is pretty similar, 2.9 to a 3.2. The supposed expert BCS pulls them apart a little bit further, a little bit lower here and a little bit higher on this one, a difference of 0.7 where this was only a difference of 0.3. And then the caliper score pulls them apart pretty good as we saw in the last slide. So problems with visual body condition scoring, if we underfeed, we're going to have impaired reproduction. We have data further along in the presentation to show you that, and we have well-being concerns. Uh, overfeeding, we're going to have high feed costs, farrowing issues, and increased pre-weaning pre mortality. So these pictures, you may recognize them if you have the, the posters that came out in the National Hog Farmer uh, body condition poster last fall in the blueprint issue. So we went and shot these sows in the Midwest last year, and 90% of the sows on the farm looked like this girl right here. Had trouble finding, finding these sows in a, in a herd of 1,600 sows. So that's a, an example of a farm that, that needs some body condition management help pretty bad. So back to our farms in the southeast, uh, here's our optimal range, here's our over-conditioned sows that we not only have high feed costs, but we're going to have higher pre-weaning mortality too. And down here is our, our potential well-being issues. So object, adoption of body condition tools, objective body condition tools, we can work to standardize people and standardize farms. And we may get to the point where we can train those people that have been on the farm for quite a while, help them in their visual body condition scoring 
through the use of objective tools as well. And then fast and accurate tools will, can reduce wean pig costs. We'll show you some data later on related to that. So experiment one, define ideal body condition in relation to reproductive performance. Uh, commercial sow farm in eastern North Carolina. There are the dates, 1,500 white line sows, and these were all multi-parity sows. Housing, they were in stalls to 35 days, and then they went into pens of four to five. Here is the actual farm and the actual sows. Uh, square footage, you can see solid flooring up here and slatted flooring in the, in the back. Body condition traits, we looked at the caliper score. Weight, back fat and loin eye area were captured using a LOCA 500. Here we can see Frank ultrasounding a sow. And then visual body condition by a trained technician. So here is the, the sow caliper that I was alluding to on the earlier graphs. It just measures the angularity of the sow's back at the last rib. You can see this caliper has been further broken into here's the optimal range, here's thin and here's fat, and it has gone as far as putting actual feeding levels for each of those three categories. So here's the concept behind the sow caliper. It's just simply measuring the angle of the sow's back. So when a sow is very light muscled and very lean, her back is going to be very angular. As she puts on muscle and fat along her loin edge, her top is going to become flat and wide. And so we see here the sow on the left, she's very angular, she's very lean, she's very light muscled. The sow here is heavy muscled and fat, and you can see the angle of her top is, is much less. And the concepts from this stem back to, this is some work done in uh, dairy cattle body condition scoring. Their visual scoring systems in dairy cattle are far advanced to what we have in swine. This is uh, taken out of the Journal of Dairy Science, 1989, and you can see how the angularity of the top changes as that animal puts on fat and muscle. Uh, statistical analysis, Proc GLM, fixed effects, uh, parities, so an example model is reproductive trait plus the group plus the barn, group by barn interaction, parity, and the body condition trait. So all these we corrected for, for parity. Uh, here are the results, just to kind of give you a general idea of what we found. Here are the reproductive traits along the left, uh, up top here are the body condition traits. CS and CS squared, that's caliper, and this is the curvilinear relationship with caliper. So we found a lot of curvilinear relationships between the body condition caliper and reproduction, indicating we could potentially find an ideal caliper score in relation to reproduction. Uh, similar for body condition, we also found optimal uh, targets. Loin eye area didn't find much relationship between body, uh, loin eye area and reproduction. Weight and back fat, all the relationships we found in this study were linear. We didn't find any uh, curvilinear relationships. So just going to hit a few highlights of that trial. Uh, we don't have enough time to go into detail on all the, all the uh, results. So here's optimal sow caliper score in relation to piglet survival. Along the x-axis is cal cal sow caliper score, y-axis piglet survival is a percentage. And you can see our over-conditioned sows have a lower pre-weaning mortality, or have higher pre-weaning mortality, uh, lower piglet survival. Same goes for under-conditioned sows. Lighter weight sows had greater piglet survival. So this is sow weight back at breeding, and this is subsequent performance in piglet survival. So along the x-axis is sow weight at breeding, y-axis piglet survival. Now this relationship was linear. So bigger sows have higher pre-weaning mortality. And in this model, parity was not significant. So what this is basic, and we've seen this in other data sets too, and generally this is relatively new information because often weight is not captured uh, sow weight in a lot of these studies. So parity was pretty much impacting how many pigs that sow farrowed, 
but once the pigs were cross fostered, weight, sow weight, was driving the piglet survival or pre weaning mortality. And then we put it all together optimal sow caliper score for reproductive throughput, x axis sow caliper score, y axis pigs wean per sow per year, and we can see a caliper score of around 14 or 15 was maximizing pigs per sow per year. Pigs weaned per sow per year. Experiment two, uh, define ideal body condition change in relation to reproductive performance. Again, commercial uh, collaborator in eastern North Carolina. Uh, the data here was actually collected by the, the f farm personnel as far as uh, we had the first study going on. This other system found out that we were doing the study and they wanted their own study. And so I designed the experiment, they collected the data, and then I analyzed it for them. Uh, 885 sows, 250 gilts, SPG genetics, dates of data collection, collected uh, using a Renko lean meter, back fat at the last rib, the sow caliper at the last rib, farm body condition score, and then on the gilts we captured uh, heart girth rate, heart girth to estimate weight. Here are the traits we were able to, to come up with then for back fat, body condition, caliper, and weight. So we collect, collected these traits at breeding, at day 35 gestation, and day 105, gest day 105 of gestation. So as far as body condition change, we were able to look at uh, early change in gestation body condition, uh, change in late gestation, and then change throughout the whole gestation in relation to subsequent reproductive performance. So statistical analysis, again, PROC GLM, fixed effects, failing group, parity. Here's our example model. And results in general, we found that uh, reproduction was associated with body condition change in guilt, but not necessarily the specific body condition. And in sows, it was just the opposite. Uh, reproduction was related to the specific body condition but not necessarily the, the body condition change. And here is, reiterate that, uh, crossed here. So these first three traits are the specific body condition at breeding, day 35 of gestation, and 105 of gestation. And here's the body condition change. And you can see uh, highlighted in yellow are the significant reproductive traits that were associated. So in the gills, the Body condition change was related to reproduction, but not actual body condition. In the sows, we see just the opposite. Actual body condition is related to specific body condition related to reproduction, but not body condition change. So again, we'll just pull a few highlights for results out of that study. Uh, here's the weight distribution of the gilts before I give you the results on the gilts. And you can see average gilt weight at breeding was 360 pounds, so pretty representative of the gilt I've seen out there that people are breeding. So gilts that gained condition during gestation farrowed fewer piglets. Across the x-axis is caliper score, gain or loss, y-axis is number born alive. The blue line here is early gestation, and the red line is late gestation. And you can see that gilts that gained condition during gestation farrowed fewer piglets. This is a similar graph, again, across the x-axis is gestation gain or caliper loss. Y-axis is uh, percentage of gilts. So the green bars here represent the distribution of how many gilts gained or lost just, uh, condition during gestation. And the red regression line is uh, number born alive in relation to gestation caliper gain. So as you can see, 44% uh, of the gilts gained condition, and those gilts that gained condition was associated with lower number born alive. So, and again, this study is 250 gilts, so I think it's some very nice preliminary data but it's not 2,000 or 5,000 gilts. So identifying ideal sow body condition in relation to reproduction, uh, both these graphs are set up the same. 
caliper score along the x-axis, number weaned, and the y-axis. Here's the results from experiment one. Here's the results from experiment two. As you can see, around that 14 or 15 caliper score in both studies was maximizing reproductive throughput for number weaned. So benchmarking gestation feed intake, this is data from AgriStats 2005 to 2010. X-axis gestation feed intake per day in pounds. Y-axis is the percentage of herds in that category. And you can see, well, we got about half that are over five pounds per day and about half under five pounds per day. Uh, data is a few years old. That sets us up for this graph here. If you guys fell asleep during the presentation, I recommend you wake up for this graph because this is the one you're probably going to want to see. This is 18,000 sounds, uh, implementation of the sound caliper in 2013. So x-axis is year, y-axis is gestation feed intake per day in pounds. So this is eight farms, 18,000 sounds, experimental unit in this analysis would be farm. So in 2012, their gestation feed intake was 5.1 pounds. They've since trimmed it down to just under 4.8. And using their economic data, they've re reduced their uh, cost of gestation feed intake by $285,000 or $15.82 per sow. So in summary, Repartitioning gestation feed intake into lactation can improve uh, reproduction and herd profitability. So the sow caliper is an objective tool that can be used to manage sow body condition. We recommend maintaining sows at a caliper score between 12 and 15. Calipers are available to the public. Just contact myself. So the ideal body condition in relation to sow reproductive performance was identified in the studies that we've shown here today. Heavy sows have greater pre-weaning mortality. So these heavy sows, they're hitting us twice. They're hitting us on feed costs. They're hitting us on reduced reproductive performance. We can't afford to have heavy sows. And they're also filling up the crate, and you may have to call them out early because they, they get too big. Need to avoid the heavy sows. Gilts, uh, one caliper score increase in body condition during gestation reduced number born alive by a half pig. Extension materials, uh, sow body condition poster that came out last fall in Hog Farmer. If you guys don't have any of these or need some more of these, they're available for free. Can't get much for free these days. Um, and they're available at pork.org, which is the through the pork store.